In this last lecture on this first part where we're talking about putting the capabilities together, essentially understanding the problem of what needs to be done, how you get the raw materials together, how you organize them, how you set up these decision processes. We'll talk now about the last piece with, with this last piece of that, which emphasizes some of the things that I've alluded to in earlier lectures, but they relate to the idea of how difficult a problem this becomes when you get large and you're deciding to put functional organizations together or else having um, different divisions that have total responsibility where everything is consolidated, so that this decentralized model, how you go about mitigating some of the challenges that are created because of the decisions you've made about how to organize your work. Uh, how, do, how do you make strategy happen? How do you develop strategic initiatives once you've organized in a certain way, which tends to get people thinking about their local world, their smaller segment of the organization, either one product house in a division or one function like finance or HR. That's what they're worried about. That's how they're compensated and what they think about. How do you get them then to, to initiate support and develop these kinds of strategic issues once they're identified? These become of the, some of the major challenges. And it really breaks down into these two efforts. When you have separate business units that work in very, in, in develop their product, you have the advantage of them knowing their customer very well, developing their environment very well, having control over the finance, accounting, marketing, sales, research and development, and all of that together very well for their particular subset of your product space or your market space that you're dealing with. On the other hand, if you're all functional and you have very good finance organization that rolls all the way up and an HR organization, an R&D organization that rolls all the way up, then you have the problem of them becoming very good at their particular skill, their particular function, their particular capability. They're extremely good at developing market research, for example. But they do it for everybody, for all the different business units, so they don't really have that much of a handle on the individual customers. How do you then get them to do a good job of supporting everyone in the other organizations? Right. Essentially, it boils down to creating the linkages that go beyond these subunits. Whatever I'm, whatever I'm, whatever organization I'm in, I need to learn how to reach outside and go work with the other organizations. In other words, if I'm in the finance organization, I need to make sure I have connections with the healthcare organization. I mean, excuse me, the, the human resources organization, the product development organization, the sales and the marketing. So you create these cross-functional teams, cross-functional coordination efforts to try and keep the mindset of everyone in those functional organizations at the overall organization level. Um, and we're going to talk in the next part two of this whole lecture series in this module eight, we'll talk about culture and we'll go to that next. Culture and leadership and how you try to you build this sense of being part of something bigger, even though your local family is a either one product set or one divisional set or one functional set. But you're part of a bigger community, which is your overall organization. And that's one of the things that we do with, um, with business with, uh, with corporate culture and, and leadership at the organization level for strategic execution. We've also alluded to the fact that our organization's boundaries are permeable and we also want to collaborate with other people in our ecosystem, other people that offer services and support that make us effective and allow us not to have to do everything ourselves, various points in the value chain. Uh, these are called network organizations. They're more and more popular. They're uh, information technology and processes and things like that and certifications have made this much easier to do. We can get someone to do our, our contract with us to do our commercials for us, as we had mentioned in a previous example. They may contract manufacture our payroll. They may do manufacture our product and service to our specifications. But we need to also create links across our strategic alliances, across our outsourcing arrangements, our joint ventures, and our cooperative partnerships. Building relationships among the managers in-house 
with those who provide collaborative services with us is yet another huge challenge for implementing and supporting strategic outreach. One of the things that comes from this discussion is, I hope, the realization that the challenge here of strategy, policy, and in particular in execution and implementation of those things, the same, is as much about getting the, the networks going and people talking to each other in the right ways across the right segments of the organization as it is about knowing how to do it. Sometimes it's easy in a staff role, a strategy, to figure out the strategy and figure out where the organization should go, but getting the organization to actually go there is a much more difficult problem. And it's really what separates really successful leaders, really successful leadership organizations, really successful strategic organizations from those who do good strategy analysis but are really not able to move it forward and take it, in, take it to heart and make that organization successful in the marketplace with a powerful strategy that rolls over, goes forward, and continues to improve. Second set of lectures here will go into that, part two, where we talk about the culture and the leadership roles that are necessary and how that all works to help move an organization forward with a powerful strategic policy agenda that is actualized in the marketplace and gets ahead of the market. That's what we'll talk about in the next set of lectures.